Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this regional discussion about capacity building. My name is Evgenia Ginyralova and I'm Knowledge and Communication Manager for the Child Hub based at TDH in Budapest. Uh, if you can hear me well, can you please write something in the chat, please? Okay, I can see people hear me, that's good. This is a good start. Okay, what I would like to do now, I will show you uh, one slide with some basic features of this platform in case for some of you it's the first time you use Adobe Connect. And then I will give the floor to my colleague Judith who is going to facilitate this discussion. So you should be able to see the slide uh, on your screen now. If you don't, please let me know. Um, so the main idea of this platform is that um, it's only one facilitator, Judith in our case, who is going to speak and then you will not have the microphones uh, available. But whatever you want to comment or ask, please feel free to use the chat, uh, which you can find in the right bottom corner. Many of you are already using it. Uh, please pay attention to the polls. Uh, you will see the first one. The polls are uh, quick questions with the uh, multiple choice answers that you will see on the screen appearing from time to time. Uh, in case you lose us and you cannot hear us, please make sure that your speaker icon is green. The speaker icon is the one uh, placed on the top left bar. Uh, please make sure you understand where it is and it should be always green. And to the right of it, there is an icon of a man with a raised hand, uh, also on the same top bar. You can click on it and use it to show your emotions, suggestions, and things like that. Okay, I hope it's uh, clear. It's very easy and basic. And now I will put the presentation for you, Did. Please give me a minute. Thank you. So the thank you. So the purpose of today's uh, meeting is to discuss in a group how we are going to come up with local trainings um, based on findings of the baseline research that has been done by Bree Ackerson and which was. Um, uh, exploring social service workforce competencies in all of your countries and I believe some of the researchers are among us at the moment so <clears throat> that's uh, we will benefit from their knowledge as well so during this meeting okay so yeah we would like to know how much uh, do you know about this study if you could uh, answer the poll So the answers are coming in and I see that a lot of you have been involved in the process so you know the, the research findings very well so that's uh, I'm really glad. And also we have uh, quite a few people who have read the study and I'm, I'm happy to read this. Thank you very much for your answers. So um, during during this uh, meeting, we will we will talk about you know the the findings of the research, but just very shortly. Uh, and after we will go through some of the things that uh, you in your local teams need to think about when um, planning um, <clears throat> local research. And uh, it's more in a way to raise questions that you can think through and consider after this meeting rather than us coming up with all the answers which I think will be quite impossible um, in, in this instance at this meeting but then uh, we, we hope that uh, there will be other opportunities for this type of discussion if, if it's need be. <clears throat> 
and then we will discuss next steps how we are actually going to come up with the, the training delivery so um, as you said uh, you know quite a bit about the, the research so I will be very brief, brief. The, the purpose of the study was to provide a basic overview of what the existing education and training context is for social service workforce members and to identify the needs and opportunities for further development and training. And the second one is um, where we will need to focus since we want to address some of these needs, even if in a, in a limited way. But we will see that the project does address several aspects of, of um, the needs uh, in different ways. And then uh, the methodology, and as you know, um, you have been involved, so the first phase was literature review of everything that's available in writing, and then the second phase was um, fieldwork and data collection, including focus groups discussions, and um, you may have been involved in those as well. So <clears throat> it wasn't a representative sample in any sense of the, the word, but we were trying to get um, important stakeholders around each table in each country to see their views on, on um, what the current situation is of social service workforce training and uh, what are the remaining gaps and needs. So um, the topic areas, and I will just go through them very um, quickly. One, the first one was to see what, what the social service workforce looks like now, what are their legal mandates, their job description as per the, the country um, legislation, how they are licensed, if they are, what the reg what's the regulation of this profession in the country, are there quality assurance um, mechanisms. The second one was looking at their whole education and how um, their career and the, the human resources of the social service workforce is managed. So there we were looking at their um, training, what other training opportunities exist, um, what are the working conditions, how are they recruited and retained, motivated, and so on. Then we were looking at skills, knowledge, and interests. So we were looking into what the curriculum of, um, of social uh, workers um, include, how is the research policy uh, and policy included in, um, in this uh, education and knowledge. And then we were looking at also existing skills, knowledge, and what training opportunities exist. So for the current discussion, as I said, we should be focusing on the continuous development of social workers. Uh, as this is what we can do with these local trainings. And I should mention that uh, we have started a cooperation with universities in six of the eight countries in order to also reform or to upgrade curricula at the university level. So for first degree holders during their um, work towards the first degree to reform that curriculum, uh, make it more practical, and include possibly some e-learning aspects of uh, this study. So as I say now, let's focus on what we here can do about the continuous development of social workers in your countries. And in the next, um, uh, you will see some findings of the study. And I only put numbers next to each of them. Uh, so read through and um, uh, you may be able to identify your country, and uh, if you have Genia, you could help me putting up the poll. Um, try and identify which which country um, the numbers uh, represent, or just try to uh, put it in the chat. If you can identify your country, which number it is. <laughs> it 
<laughs> yes, it was given away. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So three is Albania, as it was given away by the university name. <laughs> and uh, Serbia is the first one. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the, the bottom part says um, there's a system of accredited, accredited training, but only 21% of social workers attend any continuing education. Professional development is, a, is seen as an expensive non-necessity. Does any of you recognize this sentence? Yeah, Anna, exactly, it is Romania. So I just put up the next slide <laughs> um, where you can see the answers. So they, they are now in alphabetical order. <clears throat> so there are countries where there is quite an array of, uh, of professional education offered. That doesn't necessarily mean that people can um, access them or that they regularly access training during their uh, professional career. And then there are others where NGOs are taking over this role. <clears throat> and of course, there are a lot of NGOs are doing a lot of good things. Um, <clears throat> but maybe it, it remains sporadic. That's the, the point of the, the research. So, um, as I say, I'm, I'm being very brief here, but just to go through the regional recommendations from the study, um, it proposes that the, the curriculum for universities, for academic programs, need to be reviewed, and um, especially how the practicums, so when the students go into the field and can actually practice what they, they were taught, has to be um, organized better, especially the supervision, the quality control, how they are evaluated, uh, how um, the work of, uh, social, um, of the trainees are supervised uh, either by the um, university or by the organization, how the practicums are selected. The second one is about the recognition of the social service workforce, and I think we, we talk about this a lot, how important this is. Um, that there is a need for accreditation and licensing in each of the countries, in some countries that exa exist already. Um, some countries have just introduced it, but others need to do it as well. But um, <clears throat> there also should be some type of quality assurance systems, which also means that, that your work is recognized as of quality. Then improve working conditions, meaning physical infrastructure, the equipment social workers have, to have an incentive system uh, included in, um, in their career path. And of course, what I haven't put here is salary increase. Well, I think these are out of our realm of uh, possibility. Then uh, supervisory relationships should be supported. Again, uh, supervision exists in, uh, in some countries, not in others. And even if it exists, whether social workers have actually access to supervision, that's, um, that's another issue. And then um, the research made some uh, recommendations about making current research policy and practice accessible to practicing social workers. And I believe Child Hub was uh, developed with this in mind to, to really make this happen. And uh, uh, we are now also proposing this journal watch approach to universities when students and student groups could be included and uh, involved in um, reviewing existing and uh, upcoming research and uh, helping uh, with making them available 
more widely. But also it's a way for them to be involved um, and knowing the latest research. And then uh, the last one is to encourage exchange among social service workforce members. Um, one would be to have common research projects or teaching projects, but uh, and it's also a way of incentivizing them, is to have work placements um, across the board with different institutions horizontally. And the research also goes as far as to say this is possible in country, but maybe we could also enhance it uh, across countries. I think that's even more complicated. But in any case, for people who may not have such a long career path and a big ladder, they could have um, a very interesting and, and highly motivating environment if they could try other um, <coughs> areas of, uh, of work. And then uh, there needs to be a this type of exchange is also a way to pass my knowledge uh, to uh, the young members of the workforce. And I think this was especially the case for Serbia, where there is a generation, a large group of social workers that are going to retirement. And young people are coming in without all the that necessary learning and experience that the, the older generation had. Before I go into training needs, um, we would like to know your opinion about the, the recommendations. Which do you think are the most relevant recommendations from these? I will put it back on, sorry, <clears throat> so that you see. So if you could uh, fill in the poll, what do you think are the most relevant? And of course, you can choose not just one. So the supervisor relationship has come up a number of times. Working conditions, of course, as I say, uh, unfortunately, this project will not be able to tackle that problem. But for sure, every social worker would tell you this is a priority. Curriculum review has also come up quite a few times, yes. Yes, and encourage exchanges has come up. And I also have in the chat um, from Irene that uh, supporting supervision is very important and it helps uh, social workers to become reflective practitioners. And it's so much so that um, we are um, already starting to work with Irene and Ian and Celsius to, to come up with um, an e-learning module on this issue. So we hope to bring some uh, support along these lines to you. And then Ida says case management, supervision, improving working conditions. And let me see, there are some answers coming in, um, some more. So accreditation. In Romania, it is important to learn how to work with children that were abused in the family. Yes, this is coming up. It's more in terms of the, the topics of training. OK. Thank you very much for your answers. So what I can see is supervision has come up quite a few times. The um, curriculum review as well. Um, and licensing. I would say just as first glance, I didn't you know, number them, but I think those have been um, the ones that I really see coming up very often. So then um, I would move on and uh, see, um, let's see what the training needs are that the review has come up with. Thank you, Yevgenia. So there are 
there is one general topic, uh, children's rights and participation. Participation, we are um, developing an e-learning module for, and it is in the final phases of development. So soon, in about a month or two, it should be online and available for people. Um, some of you are already involved in providing feedback on the, on the first version. There are uh, issues that, uh, and there is a typo, I'm sorry, um, that concern the organization and how you work. Things like avoiding burnout and dealing with stress. We certainly found that when we offered the webinar on this issue, there was a big interest and also for the different materials that we have provided in the thematic newsletter. So it is certainly an issue for many social workers. Then organization skills, for example, time management. We know that social workers are overwhelmed. They have too many cases. But some organizational skills may uh, help this. And the legal skills were also mentioned. Uh, being, being knowledgeable about new laws, their competencies, but also, and this is something close to our heart, is to include social workers in policy development because they are in the field. They are the first line of people who know what needs to be done. And uh, it would be really good if their voice could be heard on the policy level as well. Um, training supervisors, it has come up once again. Um, but not only in terms of professional supervision, but also in terms of managerial uh, skills in terms of appreciating and uh, rewarding and feedback and providing feedback to staff. And program evaluation, something that's really missing uh, is the feedback loop from the system to know to do something and then knowing how you did to maybe change how you are doing things to improve the outcomes. This is usually missing. And there are professional issues. And this will not be of, I think, skills to work with vulnerable groups of children. And then, as you see, the children affected by sexual violence, domestic violence, uh, children at risk. Family preservation and family reunification skills. As part of the DI, there is a focus on keeping families together. That's the prevention side. And then there is the other end of the spectrum when we are trying to rehome children, reintegrate them with their biological or ex-enemies. The culturally competent social work practice with children and families, where you're able to work across cultures. Uh, communication skills. Um, and I'm sorry, but again, the, the slide is too long. So I will, um, you will not see it, but uh, I can uh, <clears throat> say that communication skills with different populations, with colleagues in different institutes. This also means that you are able to work in a multidisciplinary way. And the last one, I'm sorry, it's really not visible, is social action and community organizing. So does any of these surprise you? I should say that uh, the answers are made up from uh, exercises in each country that were putting together professionals and they had to agree on these topics. So I'm not surprised at your answers. Um, and is any skill missing from this list that you think is really critical and is a need for further training? I see a lot of people typing, so we will wait patiently. Burnout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's up on the first topic around organizational issues. Organizations are kind of preconditions for the rest of the trainings. 
true yes ah so anna the question was is any skill missing from this list that you think is really important to to address in the in your country training of people to monitor the results systematically so this is not just program evaluation but also training people who can do pro program evaluations and monitoring multidisciplinary teamwork yes burnout is a result of not having organization skills also well yes <laughs> m and &E, yes management skills knowledge how to use the strengths and resources of the extended family very good yes we really need to build on what's already there uh, and you can only build on strengths policy making competencies yes that has been very clear in the research um, as a need social diagnosis reporting skills Smaranda, if um, you could clarify social diagnosis, you, m you mean assessment, strategic thinking. Yes, Anna, that's very true. And in fact, uh, the research mentions this, that uh, social workers are very good at the right now, right here, but they may not be able to, to plan for a family or for a case strategically a uh, bit long term okay smarandi thank you anybody else preventive work communication skills yes yes and under communication skills it's it's a very general way of saying communication skills but um, certainly and this is not just for our region but for any social worker this is an issue how you work with um, uh, different types of people angry people uh, elusive people not cooperative people how you engage them identify social problems of children in the community to develop appropriate services so this is the social diagnosis thank you beneficiary needs assessment so we have on a more group level a community and we also have the individual level needs assessment research skills I think the research skills was the most controversial in the res in our findings at least whether social workers see themselves as um, someone who should be making or participating in research we certainly feel that they have a lot of data to capture Dealing with emotions, yes, is part of the uh, issue, but yes. Mm -hmm. Communication skills are imperative. Uh, pre preconditions for being social service practitioners, of course, yes. Um, database on children. Ira, if you could clarify what you mean by database on children. Community involvement and cross-sectoral support, yes, this is in the list. So culturally competent social work and the whole area of community work and cross-cultural and um, inter interdisciplinary work yes assessment skills yes just that's coming up again wow the the list is really rich mm -hmm. So Ira says there is uh, there are no unique database on children, especially children without parental care. Risk analysis, 
very specific part of uh, assessments is risk analysis. I think this this uh, discussion really got people going. Field data analysis and intervention planning. Well, intervention planning for sure. Field data analysis. Yeah, I think that that's where we got uh, different answers from social workers, whether they see themselves as analy analysis as having a task in analysis, they, they came up with very different answers. Okay, thank you very much for all these inputs for street children. Yeah. Okay, let me continue because I think this list is never ending. We could come up with many more topics that we should be addressing. So um, we have trained now around 50 people in the training of trainers with Ian and Irene. I believe many of you are in this call. And we just wanted to check with you where, how much you are aware of what is expected of you. So um, Yevgenia, if you could um, put up, uh, I don't know if this is an actual poll. Um, no, I think we wanted people to use the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, do you know, were you uh, briefed on, on what, uh, what sort of the expectations are as you went home with all these skills and knowledge? What we hope that you will be doing as uh, trainees of Child Hub. So Vesna says the Croatian team is very much informed. They know their responsibilities. Slavica also. Great. Can you name some of them? That we are going to organize training for our colleagues in the country, yes. Training and support in different areas. So in Bulgaria, Danielle is <coughs> suggesting organizing an intervention group in his city comprised of several professionals <coughs> and different child protection institutions. And they could do case discussions and text reading. Wonderful, that's a great idea. <coughs> yeah, so um, you're right. So um, we hope that um, you will be sharing um, knowledge within your resource persons group. We hope that uh, you will be involved in uh, making plans for um, for sharing this knowledge within your daily work, just as Danielle is, is planning to do, is to find um, opportunities within your regular job to spread knowledge. And this can be for some of you who are anyway lecturers or trainers, you can do that and it will be a natural um, thing. And others like Daniel has come up with a very good idea of uh, organizing an intervention group. And then uh, what we will be discussing right now is uh, the local trainings that the Child Hub can uh, support. Uh, one per year was the plan. We are a bit behind with the project, so in this year um, there should be two 
trainings uh, organized and the third one the following year. <coughs> So we have some very lively discussions in the chat. Um, Daniel explaining the, the training that he's planning. Uh, training for clarification, the interaction between experts in the multidisciplinary team in child protection system. And Irida is saying also that they have already discussed different ideas um, to do training in schools or the health sector. So before we, we get into very much the ideas for the actual training, let me just give you a couple of pointers for the for how we will get there. So um, the trainings that we should be are planning should we directly um, answer the baseline study needs that we have just uh, listed. And then uh, in your group you should define the topic of the training, define the target group, who, who are the type of professionals that you want to engage and what the geographic coverage is realistic for you. And then of course develop the actual content of the training and you might have different responsibilities within that work. And the associates are there to assist with organizing the actual training venue, the logistics, the invitations, and so on. So some principles, and these are just very shortly some things that you should keep in mind. One is possibly to make a needs assessment if you think that once you have identified your trainees to see what exactly their uh, training needs are, to decide um, who, who should come to the training and how to invite them. I would advise and we would say Keep it very practical and focus on skill areas um, that you can discuss your training plan in, of course, within your resource person group, but we hope to hear from you and see training plans and uh, there could be a very lively exchange where we can um, provide peer feedback on these training plans and I, I think there is a a value of, um, of having other people uh, helping you with the, your training plans. I think it, or we feel that it would be very important that you, you are strategic in your thinking and that you plan ahead the three trainings so that they either build on each other or they are in topic connected with each other so that they are, I mean, even if they are just one training year, you could think of how you could make it somehow connected and um, holistic in its approach. So Sandrine is saying that uh, it would be very interesting to see how we could engage in advocating more for issues that are of importance for the workforce, such as the working conditions. Definitely. Uh, and I think this is something that the resource people should be thinking about when you are now in the process of developing advocacy work plans within your countries. The trainings will indeed be offline and I'm just coming to that in fact. So yes, these are face-to-face -face meetings in an actual place in your country, but we feel that it would be an excellent opportunity to, to introduce the idea that you can get uh, training and knowledge from online resources and you could find ways that you could um, use online resources during training or give free uh, coursework or after coursework that people have to do online and this way to foster the, the habit of uh, going online to the Child Hub and using all the resources and opportunities there um, more. And of course it would be really good if you could connect the trainees 
that uh, you you will be training to the chart up community so that they become part of us and uh, then um, consider doing evaluation after the training uh, keeping the database uh, of the participants uh, also as a way of, of building the network. So Sandrine is asking about the University of Kent uh, online simulation game. Um, I, I wasn't going to, but uh, I think I can also give you the floor if you want to. There is a simulation game uh, that actually is about um, how you communicate with families during a family visit. Uh, it's a computer-based game, but it is designed for classroom discussions. And I can naturally share this with you. You can look at it and see if you can use it. But I think at this point it only exists in English. And uh, there might be some other adjustments that we need. So it may not be um, ready by the time you would want to have the trainings. Ira says they have some great ideas for the training. Different groups had great ideas and demonstrated wonderful. And um, Miroslava says uh, thinking of popularizing the e-module of child participation among our partner organizations. Everything it will be very helpful indeed. Yes. So Smaranda has already put up the, the link. Thank you very much for the rosy game. And uh, in fact, I would like to invite all of you to try it. It's a downloadable. And then you can um, try it out and see if this is something that you think is interesting. And I would really like to get feedback from you because uh, we can work on making it into your languages. We can try other ways. Uh, we can also work for, for a worksheet. Um, exactly uh, what Sandrine says, that uh, if you think this is a useful tool, we can certainly work to make it uh, available and workable locally, in your local language with a worksheet. So that's really great. So. Yeah, the, the last li last point is just to report back to Child Hub. So next, I'm just going to put up some questions which you should uh, think about. Maybe not right now, because it needs some discussion, but just to think about and maybe come back to us. The timing, when do you think it's realistic to have the first training? The second, just to have an idea to put together a work plan, so for you to discuss who will work on it, what deadlines you give each other, who is responsible for what to get to the actual trainings. What resources you need? Is there anything that you need from us, from the associates? And then we just open up to you and see what questions you have at this stage that we can help you with. And I would like to invite my colleagues, Sandrine and Yevgenia, to help me out with possible answers. And also, associates, please feel free. I feel very much alone here. And uh, Yevgenia is putting up another question. We, we want to hear from you whether you think there is a there is a interest or need for further exchanges online where we can exchange experience about the trainings specifically. Yeah, I feel like uh, the executioner at the gallows. I'm, I'm on um, presenter mode, which i never been before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so think about questions that you want to ask others or us about the preparation for the trainings.
So Raluca says uh, we are planning a meeting with the trainers at the end of February to discuss topics and other details. Very good. So that's your first step in the planning. Uh, Kalina says there may be a need to have an additional meeting, but after we discuss some ideas. Yes, I, I, I would think so, and I would really welcome it. We will have RP meeting in Moldova, February 9th, and discuss more. Croatia, we will have a meeting about this issue. After it, we'll have probably a lot of questions. I believe so. So Sandrine says we should see how the training fit the larger plans of resource people. So yes, it's very important that this training should be somehow integrated on everything else you do as child hub, as you know, your daily job, as needs in the country. So all this should be in the system. Serbian team will have a meeting next week. Oh my God, you're very quick in writing now and <laughs> I'm starting to lose you. We could exchange some ideas and experience in our group on Child Hub also, of course. And in fact, uh, I will open a discussion specifically for trainings and I hope that you will use the forum to discuss. Blind shot, we may need letter of support by the project in order to approach local authorities. Yes, that's uh, possible, of course. Very happy to do that. Um, Moldova, it is certain that most RPs that participate in the TOT will use the new skills and knowledge in their regular work, which involves a lot of training. Wonderful. It's very good to hear. Yes, the forum we will definitely open for, for the local trainings. And I'm really hoping that all these people who were at the TOT are now confident in exchanging. And uh, I would like to remind you to look at the Rosie game. Uh, and I would really love, love to hear from you whether you think this is something that you could use as part of your training, whether we should invest in uh, making it into languages and making a worksheet that uh, can accompany that some instructions for the trainers. So what I would suggest is that, uh, as I see it, all of you are planning meetings and you will be discussing this. So try to, to uh, start the planning and see what many questions you have and then maybe come back to us with these questions and then we could organize another session where we discuss this, these questions as well as, of course, the forum is there and if you write questions in the forum, we will make sure that we answer. And I hope that all of you are also helping their, your peers with the questions. If it's a professional issue, if they need ideas, or if they are not sure about something and they want to ask you, that I hope you, you are a supportive team and, and you're helping um, each other out. I would like to know if you have pressing questions right now that we should address. Is there anything that wasn't clear? Um, anything that we should address? I see a couple of people typing. Three trainings for one year? No. So the original idea was one training per year. And we are in the second year of the project, which means that we haven't done one last year. So two trainings this year and one training next year. The presentations will be shared, yes. And in fact, we have recorded the webinar itself. Sandrine is looking forward to the future launching of the baseline reports. Yes, I think, I believe all of you are in the planning and I'm in touch with you. And the regional overview should be finalized mid-February. 
Yes, so what I've been presenting is based on a draft and we are still in discussion with Pri on some of the points. So do we choose topic for training on our own? Ira, yes, so based on the baseline research and these topics that were identified, within that, you, of course, you, you see what you are comfortable with, what you see the biggest need for, what you think fits the overall plan of Child Hub and everything else you do. So it should be a, a strategic discussion. Sandrine says the same. So you should be discussing this with the group of resource persons. Is there any kind of formal material for taught reports presentations? Yes, uh, the, the trainees have received uh, manuals, training manuals, and not right now, but we are working on providing all of that in one systematic way, in one publication, which will be available on Child Hub, hopefully within a month or six weeks. And m &E surveys are available as well. For reporting to TDH, the informal material for the reports presentations. Vesna, could you please clarify for reporting to TDH? You mean that for the thought to report back on the thought? So the participants have all uh, filled out a, a training feedback form after the after the training, and yes, we will be coming back to the trainees in a year time to see how they are using the skills uh, and knowledge that they have acquired in their, in their everyday job, so that, that will be done. And I, that's what I was uh, proposing, that the, for the trainings that you will be doing, I would uh, advise that you do uh, training in, um, evaluations at the end of the trainings. And the reason why we would like to keep the database of people that were trained by you is to be able to go back to them after to see how they see their skills being improved and how they are using what they've acquired during the training. But also, of course, to, to increase our network, to be in touch more, and of course, to make them a, a, a make available more resources to them as well. So definitely, as part of your planning for the training, you should think about these monitoring and evaluation needs as well. And we can certainly give you uh, m &E tools that can be the same for every country. How do we prove that we have done the training? Yes, so yeah, you should be, so there is a training plan that you should put together and share with us. And the associates will be organizing the training, so hopefully they are involved when you are doing it. And there will be some short report back to us, as well as the <coughs> feedback forms of the trainees. It would be good, yes, to have participant list, yes. And of course, we would like to hear in terms of communication as well. So news on the website about the, the training, just as Yevgenia says, and photos we would love to have. <laughs> yes, we are always uh, eager for news from you on activities that you do and to document it and promote it on the website. So these are the different ways you will document. Yes, that's right. So the number of participants on training, any minimum? Uh, well, I would say that uh, the ideal number for a training is between 15 and 25. And this, this is, I mean, it depends again whether you will have two trainers for a training, then you can have up to 25 people. If you only have a single person, then it's, you know, it's around 15. Uh, 
And I really hope that you don't go for the minimum, but for the maximum possible. Yes, and uh, the, the budget, of course, is a limiting factor. Uh, I will talk to all the associates about that, but you have a set budget for the local training. Well, I think, uh, Miroslava, we, you are, are, at least in my experience, if, you, if it's a very hands-on training, you want to have between 15 to 25 people Yes, yeah, you, you cannot have more, and if you have less than eight, it's really, I mean, first of all, it's a waste of anybody's time, but also the group is already too small. And I think we should be aiming for as many as possible. Yeah, so these things about uh, the costs, of course, need to be considered. I wait for people because I see them typing, Barbona and Darina. How long should be the training? Well, uh, as we don't have accommodation costs or anything like that, we believe that realistically they will be one-day trainings. But again, uh, there, there are a number of ways you can do it. You have to look at your budget, also what people are willing to invest in terms of their time. The trainers from the TOT, are they going to go through thematic training anymore? Um, sorry, Valbona, I didn't understand the second part of the question. So the TOT participants um, were, I mean, the second group, of course, is still coming back uh, end of February. So there is a second session for you. The first group has had the two sessions. Um, will they do any other training, TOT? From us, no. Uh, now it's their time to give training to others. And we hope to keep, you know, this group as our core group of resource people. And uh, we hope you will be more involved with us and uh, we can have other exchanges like this when all of you are online and we can exchange ideas on different issues. We are planning to have these type of discussions on other issues as well. I see more people typing. One more question, should we train the same group of people for all three trainings? I don't think so, but um, I think we, we should be aiming at reaching out to as many people as possible. But again, this should be the discussion within your country, a strategic thinking that takes into account all the possibilities, all the needs, um, and then come up with, with the answer yourselves. I would go for trying to reach out to more people, but, but you may go for a different approach. <laughs> it 
Slavica, I'm glad you liked the meeting. Um, I wish, you know, we could give the voice floor to everybody, um, but it's a, it's a bit difficult when we are so many on the line. So I actually very much appreciate your patience and typing. Uh, I feel it's, it's, a, it's a very lively discussion, even if it's in writing and just me speaking. Um, I appreciate all the feedback and ideas and all the energy that I can feel coming through. So, thank you very much. And as I say, please do your meetings and come back to us with questions. Let's start a forum discussion where you can uh, continue all of this I really thank you all for, for being here and giving all your thoughts and positive energy. And I hope this is the energy that you will put into the training planning and the, the training delivery. And uh, from what I can see, you already have great ideas. So I, I wish you um, good proceedings on them. And then let's hear from each other on the forum, on email, uh, and then eventually we can come back here and uh, go on from there. Thank you very much.